Hi, I'm Todd Rubold with the Institute on the Environment, and I'm excited to be here today to share some of my favorite tips for creating superstar presentations. First, I want to start out with a question, though. Think about your next presentation. You've just finished up your talk, and you look out at the audience. Do you want their reaction to be something like this? Or do you want their reaction to be more like this? Great, then that's definitely the reaction we're going for here today. I'm going to share with you some of my favorite tips related to presentation design, development, and then the del delivery of your talk when you're actually up there giving the presentation. So let's get started with presentation design. Oftentimes we think about design as being the icing on the cake or something that comes later in the process, but design is core to effective presentations. And so I want to share some of my favorite design tips to start out with here today. Now the first thing you need to remember is this really, really great quote, that good design is as little design as possible. So it's really about stripping away all that non-essential information from your presentation just to focus on your core messages. So the first tip to keep in mind is this, oh crap, and not oh crap, I've got to give a presentation, but this actually stands for contrast, repetition, alignment, and proximity. Now, let me give you, give you an example of each one of these here. So here's an example of poor contrast. It's difficult to see this lettering on the background. Simply by using this idea of contrast, I allow the color of my lettering to really stand off the screen and really jump out so it's visible for my audience. Repetition refers to being consistent throughout your presentation. So the consistent use of fonts or colors or design elements. You want to be able to step back from that presentation and see it in terms of a, being a cohesive whole, looking like all the pieces fit together. Alignment is pretty simple. It's just like it sounds. You want elements on the screen to align with one another, whether that's left alignment or center alignment. So in the example here, I've got a photo with some text at the top that's just kind of hanging off to the side. So simply by aligning that text with the edge of the photo on the top and the bottom, again, I've cleaned up that slide and made it look a lot more professional. Now, proximity refers to grouping together similar items on the slide. So in this example, I have a title slide where everything is kind of running into one another. So simply by grouping together the name of the presentation, the name of the presenter, and the organization, I've created this visual hierarchy for my audience so they know what's the most important thing, the title, second most, third most, and so forth. Now, another thing that designers really love is this idea of white space, creating this visual breathing room or open space in slides. Let me give you an example of that here with a pretty typical slide. So this is what a normal slide probably looks like nowadays. It's chock full of information. There's so many different bullet points happening here and so many main points. It's difficult for our audience to know what is the main message of this slide. With your slides, it's really important to have just one main message per slide. And I'm going to come back to that idea a little bit later here. But let me show you how I can take one of these bullet points, use this idea of white space, and really make this slide much more clear for my audience. There we go. Now I've got a great slide with just that one main point. I've removed all the other distraction from this slide. I can talk to my audience about the importance of clean drinking water around the world without everything else that was happening in the background beforehand. When it comes to using photos and pictures and those sort of things in your presentation, here's something to keep in mind. If you have just slide after slide filled with text, your audience is only going to remember about 10% of that presentation. But as soon as you mix in some visuals, that number is going to jump up to 65%. So if you want your message to stick, then you really have to bring in some visuals. Let's go through another before and after example here to show you what I mean. So here's a statement that's pretty powerful by itself, talking about the Amazon rainforest being cleared at an alarming rate. But look what happens when I bring a visual into that slide. Now it's like you're transported into that scene. It's like you can almost feel that smoke burning down into your lungs. That's the power of visuals to really bring your presentation to life. Now, a lot of times when it comes to using visuals, we see slides like this next one, where we have a bunch of bullet points and a bunch of small photos. But the problem here is that your audience is becoming distracted again. Some of them might be reading the bullet points. Some of them might be looking at one of the photos. We want to remove that distraction and go back to that idea of one main point per slide. So I'm going to grab a little bit of that text and one of the photos here and show you another before and after. So here now I've chose just that one photo and the one bit of text, but 
I can use that full screen. I can blow that photo up to fill the whole screen. I can be bold, if you will. So let's try that now. Okay, now I've got the photo filling my whole screen, but if you look closely, you'll notice that that photo is a little bit blurry. We want to try to use photos that look really clear and crisp when we go into full screen mode. And when you're selecting photos, make sure you're not just pulling random photos off the web. Usually there are some copyright issues and the resolution won't be quite high enough for a full screen presentation. All right, so here's the final version of that slide. I've got a nice, crisp, clear photo now. I've got the text sitting nicely in the white space that I've used in the slide, and everything is working really, really well. But let's say that you want to use a photo where the background is a little too complex. There's a little too much happening in the background. So a simple trick here is to put a background behind your text so it stands out more. Or better yet, what I would suggest is move that text all the way to the side so they, or move, excuse me, move that image all the way to the side so that your text can sit there right in the nice open space that's created now. When you're putting together your presentation and you're thinking about using visuals or graphics or that sort of thing, something else you want to keep in mind. Never ever use clip art. Now, you can get away with using really nice drawings or illustrations, but you just don't want to use cheesy clip art. Again, that'll take away from the professional nature of your presentation. When it comes to using color in your presentations, I actually want to start with a question for all of you. So, what does the color green remind you of? So, for some people, when they see the color green, they might think of spring or of money. Um, how about the color red? What does red remind you of? For some people, red might re remind them of the holidays or a stop sign. The point being that the colors you choose in your presentation will also convey a meaning to your audience. So, you want to select your colors with purpose. So a great example of this are using maps. I mean, most map makers choose the color blue to represent water because most water in the real world tends to be a shade of blue. So there's a real purpose behind selecting that color. So keep that in mind when you're picking out colors to use in your presentation, that they might have a certain meaning for your audience too. Also want to keep in mind that not all of your audience is able to, to distinguish between different colors. So don't rely solely on colors to make your message or make your point come across in giving your presentation. When it comes to using fonts and text in your presentation, here's another simple tip to keep in mind. You want to try to limit the number of fonts in your presentation. Just because my computer has all these different fonts doesn't mean that I need to use all of them in my presentation. My advice is to select just one or two main fonts and just stick with them throughout your entire presentation. I have a little quiz for you here related to fonts and, and such. So here's the question. When should you use this font, Comic Sans, in your presentation? So here are some possibilities for using Comic Sans. If your audience is a bunch of clowns, I'm sure they love Comic Sans. Or if it's a bunch of kids, I'm sure they love Comic Sans. And those are about the only options I could really think of. Now, I say this in jest, but the point that I'm trying to make here, again, is that the font that you use will also convey a message to your audience and so you want to use a font that, again, conveys professionalism. A great font, if you're just looking for something to use in your presentations, is Helvetica. It's on most computers, and it looks really nice when it's used in a presentation. It's really easy for your audience to read. All right, with this next slide, we're going to play a little game here. I know that you're watching this online, but if you will, go ahead and read this next slide to yourself. I'm going to read the slide out loud, and we're going to see what happens here. Okay. So, you ready to start now? Great. So, ready, set, go. Hi, this is my slide filled with really important text. I'm going to add some bullet points to make it more interesting. And then I'm going to read the slide nearly word for word. Are we having fun yet? Really? Okay, so most of you have probably by this point finished reading. You're at the very bottom of the slide, and you've totally illustrated my point. That you can read the slide faster than I can say those words. But how many times have we gone to a presentation where we've seen this happen, where somebody just stands up there and reads their slides? You definitely don't want to do that. I think that a lot of presenters do that, though, because they feel nervous about giving their presentation. They want to create a teleprompter for themselves so they don't lose their place. But this is something that you really want to avoid. And here's why. The audience is either going to read your slides or they're going to listen to you as a presenter, but generally they're not going to do both. So you don't want to lose that connection with your audience 
by reading your slides word for word. So here's my challenge for all of you, and this is a really big challenge. Next time you're giving a presentation, try to do so without any bullet points at all. That alone will make you a much, much better presenter. Trust me on that one. All right, let's move ahead to using charts and data in presentations. And here's another really great quote that I love when it comes to using data. Data slides really aren't about the data. They're about the meaning of the data. So what I mean here, what this quote means, is that it's not about the chart or the graph. It's about the information you're trying to convey to your audience. So let's do another before and after to illustrate this point. So here's a chart that I created over in Excel, and I dropped it into my presentation. And it has something to do with bicycling in different countries around the world. But the message isn't really coming through. How about this? Is that any better? No, that's probably just as confusing. And how about the pie chart? Well, the problem with this pie chart is that the Netherlands, Belgium, and the US are all in shades of blue. And it's really difficult to distinguish which is which on this particular pie chart. Now, a lot of times people try and compensate for these issues with charts by using a whole bunch of them on just one slide. But that actually makes it more confusing for our audience. So here's my recommendation for you. It's really important to be able to recreate that chart or that graph right in PowerPoint or right in Keynote, right in your presentation software, so that you can tweak it and modify it to really fit the message you're trying to get across. So let me show you how that might work. So I'm going to take the data I showed you just, just a moment ago, and I'm going to recreate it right here in my presentation software. OK, so now I've highlighted just the main countries that I want to focus on. I've got the US and Denmark in shades of blue. But remember, not all of the audience will be able to see those differences in color. So you want to add in those key data points to really help you get across your message. So now I've got my key data points. But notice that I didn't put all the other numbers in there. I just want to have those other countries for context, but I want to focus on the US and Denmark. Final thing is that I can give this slide a much stronger title to really make this work together. So there we go. Danes cycle 16 times further than Americans each day. I've got a real, really clear title. I've got just my key data points highlighted. And everything is working together really well. And I've simplified this information quite a bit to remove, again, all that distraction that was happening beforehand. So let's put together all these different design tips here. And let's take a look at what goes into a typical slide nowadays. And when you build up a slide from scratch, it's pretty amazing all the information that we're stuffing into each individual slide. So usually we start with a blank template. Then we'll add a title. And then we add a whole bunch of bullet points. I've still got room on the bottom of this slide, so I'm going to add a little bit more information down there. I bet you can guess what's coming next. I've got room for photos, so I'm going to put some photos in. A couple photos, actually. I'm going to add a pie chart. I'm going to add the source of the slide. My favorite, slide 30 of 100, so you know there's 70 more slides coming up just like this one. And then finally, the logo. That's a lot of information in one slide. That's too much information. I mean, what if the rest of life was like PowerPoint? We'd have road signs that look like this, and we'd be driving our cars into the ditch. But this idea of presenting and, and driving a car, there's actually a really good comparison there. Because when we're driving down the road, we want to be able to scan the sign for the relevant information and then bring our attention back to the road. When you're presenting, you want the audience to scan your slide for the relevant information and then bring their attention back to you as the presenter. So many times I think we forget that we're the ones conveying the important message to our audience, and the slides are there just to reinforce or back up those main messages. So a lot of times, I think we ask the wrong questions when it comes to presenting. And by this I mean that we're asking questions such as, how many words per slide, or how many bullet points per slide. Instead, I think we should be asking, what's that main message I can get across with the slide, and how can I do it as clearly as possible? Because unlike the days of the rotating slide projector, these slides are free. You can use as many as you want within reason to make your point with your presentation. All right, so now you know all about presentation design, and you're able to create really great slides. I'm going to talk to you a little bit about putting it all together into a really effective presentation. So what's the first thing most of us do when it's time to give a presentation? We probably open up our laptop or open up our computer and we start moving around slides. Or maybe we start creating slides. 
my advice to you is to actually step away from the computer as the first step. You might want to go somewhere you can just sit and read and get ready and to start thinking about your presentation. You might want to take some notes on what you're going to be talking about. So the notes you're seeing on the screen here now are actually what became the presentation that you're watching at this moment. You might also want to then take those notes and organize them into post-it notes. This is something I did with the talk that you're hearing today. At this point, I'm still not thinking about slides, though. I'm just getting different ideas together. And then I took those post-it notes and I started to think about what are the main themes of my presentation. So there's a theme on color, on images, et cetera, that you've seen emerge through this presentation here today. While I'm doing this, though, and this is really, really important, is that you want to be able to edit, edit, edit. And what I mean here is you might have some slides or some information that you really love, but if it doesn't help to support your main point, you want to edit that out and cut out everything that doesn't really matter in your presentation. Another way to put this is a question of, did you bring your big idea? And by this I mean, if you had to, could you summarize your presentation, say, in a sentence or two? Great, that's the first step. The next thing then is, look through all your slides and ask yourself, does this slide help to reinforce my main message? If not, then let it go. When you're putting together your presentation, it's also really important to keep your audience in mind, too. And something you want to think about with your audience is, your audience is coming into that presentation with a certain amount of knowledge about what you're talking about or a certain preconception. Your job is to figure out what do you want them to know after hearing that presentation? What do you want them to learn? What do you want them to do? What's the takeaway that you want to leave with your audience? You want to keep that in mind, too, as you're putting together your presentation. You also want to remember that there are two sides to both audiences. And I'm not talking about men and women or anything like that. There's the left brain side and the right brain side. And here's how this works. The left brain side loves the facts and the charts and the data and all that information. But the right brain side loves the creative side of what your present presentation is all about or the possibilities behind what you're talking about. Our job as presenters is to appeal to both sides of our audience. And a great way to do this is actually through storytelling. When we were kids, we loved going to story time. Well, it's the same, time, the same thing for adults. We love going to the movies or picking up a book because we love a really great story. And when it comes to storytelling and presentations, what the most effective presentations do in terms of telling a story is they combine two elements. First, they combine a bit of logic. There has to be some truth behind what you're saying or some some data behind what you're, the point you're trying to make in your presentation, some logic, if you will. But you want to try to connect that with a bit of emotion. And this is the piece that's often missing in presentations. When you can combine logic and emotion into a presentation, that's when the real magic happens for your audience. So keep that in mind. Now, some of you might be thinking, well, I work with faculty or with researchers who don't really tell stories. And my response is typically, those are where some of the best stories come from, if you really think about it. The whole story of discovery. You know, what did you discover along the way? What was your motivation? What were the setbacks and the challenges as you reached that discovery? If you put that together, you'll have a really, really great presentation. OK, so now it's time for a really quick break. And what do I mean by this? Well, let me jump to this next slide and tell you about something called the 10-minute rule. And here's how the 10-minute rule works. On one axis, we've got attention span going from low to high. On the bottom axis, we've got the amount of time that the presentation has been going on. And notice that when the presentation starts, the attention span is really high. When the audience senses that the presenter is about to wrap up, the attention will peak again. But at 10 minutes, there's a crash. At 20 minutes, a peak and a crash. At 30 minutes, a peak and a crash. And at 45 minutes, wow, that's a pretty long time for most presentations. So our job as presenters is to figure out how to throw in changes of pace to really keep our audience engaged. So one thing you can do that's really easy is to ask questions. This is a great way to engage with your audience, check in with them, and make sure they're still paying attention to what you're talking about. You could also show a short video clip if you wanted to. Something maybe just a minute or two long is all you need to do. And third, here's my favorite tip of all. Watch what happens when I do this. When I turn off the slides altogether, 
you have nothing to look at in the background. So your attention is drawn right into the presenter. So if you have a really important point to make, don't be afraid to turn the slides off. Just talk to your audience and really make that point one-on-one -on -one with them. All right, finally now, I just want to share a few of my thoughts related to when you're actually up there giving your presentation. Now, this probably won't come as a surprise to most of you, but if you want to give a really strong presentation, you really have to practice, practice, practice. My advice is to work on your presentation and then be able to say it out loud at least four or five times before you ever give that presentation in public. Even doing that, though, I know that there are those among us, and I'm one of these people, who gets really nervous before giving a presentation. No matter what we do, our palms get sweaty, we feel the butterflies in our stomach. So here are a few tips for getting over those nerves before you start your presentation. First, it's really important to arrive early. You don't want to have to rush into the place where you're giving a presentation. Hope that your technology is going to work and really get set up in just a couple minutes. You want to get there, get set up, and make sure everything's working just fine. Next thing is it's sometimes a good idea to just chat with your audience. Find out what their interests are or why they came to hear your presentation. You might learn something that you can incorporate into your pre presentation that day. The third thing is you really want to ask people to sit close. It's okay to ask people to move a little bit closer. If you're really feeling nervous, you don't want to have to yell to the back of the room for people to hear you. And then finally, this is a really important one that I often forget myself. You want to remember to breathe throughout your presentation. Give yourself those pauses, those moments to catch your breath. This is especially important when you start your presentation, that you have a couple deep breaths so that you feel ready to be in your presentation with your lungs full of oxygen. Okay, you've done all your background work, you've put together a really great presentation now, and you're just about to get up there and give a really strong talk. You want to, make a, a, you want to have a great opening right from the very beginning. And there are two ways to do this. Just like this dog is jumping right into this pool, you want to dive right into your presentation. So the first way that you do that is with a really great introductory slide. Now this is a pretty average introductory slide. I mean, it has all the relevant information, and it tells the name of the presentation and the presenter, but it's not really inspiring. Your first slide is like, again, like a book cover that draws your audience in before you ever say a word. So let's rework this slide. Again, let's use a visual to help make this come to life. And let's give it a slightly more provocative title than what we had just a moment ago. Now your audience can get excited about your presentation before you even say anything. But once you do get up there to start your presentation, this is really important. Remember that 10 minute rule from a few slides back? That first 30 to 60 seconds is really critical. It's a make or break time in your presentation. You don't want to start out by something that's off topic or start out by talking about something unrelated to your presentation. You want to jump right in with a really strong fact or a story or something that will really grab the audience's attention right from the start. As your presentation goes along, you might also consider following the lead of Steve Jobs, who was a master presenter. And he was great at doing something called the star moment. And that star stands for something they'll always remember when he would pull a computer out of an envelope. Now, you don't have to do anything quite that fancy, but remember that you want to have those moments in your presentation that people really remember, whether it's having a prop that you show them or having that story or that amazing fact that they'll walk out of the room talking about and really remembering from your presentation. A few more tips when you're giving a presentation. If you have a podium that you're using for your presentation, you don't want to hide behind the podium. You want to be able to move out from, out from behind that podium and build that connection and that rapport with your audience. It's also really great then to have a remote control to allow you to move around, give you the freedom to get away from the computer and get away from the podium. It's also important, though, to leave the lights on in the venue where you're giving your presentation. You want both the slides to be visible and you as the presenter to be visible, too. Here's a photo that I took at a conference not too long ago, where you can see the presenter, kind of the shadow off to the side, but then the slides, you can see those slides even more so. They, but you lose this disc, you have this disconnect between you and the presenter when this happens, when the audience can't actually see that person and interact with them throughout the presentation. Another tip is that you don't want to turn your head and read your slides to your audience. That's a definite no-no, 
and again, a way that you're going to lose that connection with your audience. My final point today is this, and I just love this photo of Martin Luther King when I talk about this. Our job as presenters is really to inspire our audience. It's to engage with them. It's to get them excited about what, they're work what we're working on, to have them care about what we're working on. And a great way for us to do this as presenters is really just to be ourselves, but just a little bit more interesting version of ourselves. And by that, Andy Goodman, who made this quote or stated this quote, what he means is you want to be authentic to who you are, but you also want to realize that you're on stage when you're giving a presentation. And so you might have to be a little bit more demonstrative than you usually are, or speak a little bit louder than you normally would in order to convey your message and your enthusiasm to your audience. Because going back to this image from earlier, we really do want our audience to be excited about what we're working on. And so we need to show some passion as presenters for the topics that we really care about. If you're interested in learning more about presentations, there are a number of great resources that you can check out. A few books that I personally really like are the Presentation Zen series. There's another series called Slideology. And there are a number of great books for learning more about this topic. There are a number of terrific photo sites online, too, for you finding images for your presentation. Uh, uh, iStock Photo, which is shown here, is a photo site where you actually have to pay for the photos. There are a number of photo sites online where you can actually get free photos, too. There are also websites if you want to be inspired by what other people are doing, such as noteandpoint.com or Slides That Rock. These are really great sites to go see what other people are doing with their presentations. And if you really do want to become a better presenter, and I hope that's all of your goal in watching this, it's really important to ask for feedback when it comes to your presentations. You really want to get that cri critical feedback on what is working and what's not working in terms of your presentation. It's a great idea to record yourself giving a presentation to really see ways that you might be able to improve. Final message for the day, my final slide is this. If you only remember one word from this entire talk, I hope that it's this word. Simplify. You know, oftentimes we think that by simplifying something, we're dumbing it down. But I think that by simplifying our presentations, we're actually making them more accessible for our audience. And that should be all of our goal. So here's my contact information. And I wish you the best of luck in creating really effective presentations. Thank you.